first thing I'm going to do is this f will be, as we mentioned, is a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over d. So first let's look at this epsilon value, okay, this epsilon. Now, so this epsilon is called equivalent roughness. So when I look at my epsilon value for different materials, let's say that I have a steel pipe that I have. And these are tabulated both in terms of the feet, which is the British gravitational, and I already have millimeters as well. Note that these numbers are going to be very small because most of the pipes that we use are fairly smooth, right? If I look at this uh, still, there's not just a value, but a range of values. For instance, this ranges from, let's say, 1 millimeters to 9 millimeters, right? So that is fairly used. Uh, and also I can do the same for the British gravitational. You're going to see that I'm going to get 0 0.003 to 0 0.03. Again, as feet is a fairly long uh, unit, the numbers are going to be fairly small, okay? I can look at PVC is a general name for it as well, right? PVC pipe, and you will see that this is zero, and this is zero as well. So this is a smooth, so this epsilon over D will be zero for PVC, okay? If I have drawn tubing, this is also sometimes used, drawn tubing, fairly common. And I will get myself a very, very smooth surface. I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 5. And I can get myself 0 0.1215, okay? As you can see, this is extremely smooth. And this is commonly used in industry as well, okay? Obviously, the lower this epsilon value, the lower the loss in my system is going to be. So it is preferable to have something that is more smooth as opposed to more rough, okay? So now... Now we understand epsilon. Um, epsilon over d, what is the unit of epsilon over d? It is unitless, right? Because I'm dividing length by length. Okay, so now I have this Reynolds, epsilon over d, and f. So in order to analyze that, I have to show you something called Moody's chart. I will show you two approaches. One will be chart-based reading. The other is going to be a formula that I'm going to introduce to you. But first, let's start with the Moody's chart. Okay, now you're looking at the Moody's diagram, okay? First thing I want to start with the axis. The first the x-axis is the Reynolds number. The y-axis, the first y-axis is the friction factor, or this is f. And on the right-hand side, it's listed as epsilon over d. As you remember, f will be a function of Reynolds number and epsilon over d. So that's what I'm looking over here. The x-axis is the Reynolds number. The secondary y-axis is the relative pipe roughness. Okay. The second thing that I would like you to understand is this is a log log. So what I mean by that is that let's look at thousand. Look at the two thousand distance between one thousand and two thousand. This is three thousand. You see these gaps are getting smaller and smaller, right? That's a log log scale. Okay. And same thing happens over here. You can see 0 0.02, 0 0.3, 0 0.03, and 0 0.04. It's getting smaller and smaller the distances. Okay. So we have three regions in the Moody's diagram. The first is something that I actually derived myself, okay? So this is the laminar flow, and you can see it goes all the way to 2000, okay? So if my Reynolds number is less than 2000, it's not depending on epsilon over d. The epsilon over d has no effect on the f value lower than 2000, okay? The second region that's defined from here, from 2000 to 3000, okay, I called in my note 2500, it just depends how you want to envision it, is the transition region, okay? And you can see in this transition region, the F value is a function over epsilon over D. Let's say that my value is 0 0.01, so basically I track this line, right, I go all the way to here, then I read, depending on my Reynolds number, I read a value and I go off of here and I read that particular F value, right? That's how it works. And you can see if I continue from 3000 and on, I will get myself the turbulent reg region, okay? And you can see over here, one thing is this is the smooth line, okay? So epsilon over D is zero, such as for PVC. Now, uh, this is the line that I'm going to follow. If my epsilon over D is five times 10 to the minus five, then this is the line that I'm going to follow. Okay, so does this epsilon over d needs to be in metric or British gravitational? This is 5 times 10 to the minus 5? Uh, no, it doesn't matter, right? It is non-dimensional relative 
pipe roughness. That's the advantage of plotting this way. Okay. So actually, in this particular version of the Moody's diagram, you can see they also listed you your epsilon values as a function of different materials that you have. For instance, iron is 0 0.15, the round tubing 0 0.0025. You can see among different sources, you will see different values. So now let's read a value. So let's say that my uh, Reynolds number is 1 million. Okay. And then let's say that my. Uh, you can see, let's stop right over here. So my epsilon over D is 0 0.005 and my Reynolds number is 1 million. Then if I do that, for instance, if I continue like this, you're going to see that my friction factor will be 0 0.03, right? So that's one value. So this is fairly um, self-explanatory. If you happen to find an epsilon over D in between these two lines, because this is not an infinite number of lines, let's say that I got myself 0 0.004. Well, the best thing you can do over here, you will draw a particular line and try to track it, right? That's the best thing you can do, given you do not have enough information. And you see here is the dot line is the complete turbulence. So basically, as the name recommends, after this point on, you know, we are going to have a complete turbulence, okay? And one other thing I would like you to notice is, look at the effect of Reynolds number at the higher ends of the spectrum. Okay, let's look at these... Uh, complete turbulence or sometimes we call it fluid turbulent region. You can see that the Reynolds number actually doesn't have any impact, right? If my value is 10 to the 10, then it actually is fairly constant, right? Look at this line. So something to notice for you. Okay? So this is the first alternative to measure your or obtain your F value. Now I will go ahead and show you the second approach. The second approach is based on equations, some analytical expression, because it sometimes is much more easier for us to just plug a value into a formula and obtain a number as opposed to reading off of a chart, right? So there has been substantial efforts for that, and there are two well-known formulas which I will write to you. The first one is the Colbrook formula, okay? And this formula will be alternative to reading the Moody's chart, okay? minus 2 log of epsilon over d divided by 3.7 plus 2.51 Reynolds number times the square root of the f value. Okay, so as you can see, um, fairly complicated equation, I'm not going to lie, right? And one other difficulty in here is you see there's a square root of f and there's a square root of f within this log. So it's fairly hard to compute this from the mathematics standpoint, okay? But at the end of the day, note that this still follows this f is a function of epsilon over d and the Reynolds number. It's very similar to the Moody's chart. So it is reported that there's 10% error approximately in here, but I don't want you to feel this is an inferior method. The reason is that when you're reading off of a chart, there is always the error of chart reading as well, okay? When I teach it in a face-to-face -face environment, I ask the students, I give a few cases, and when we average out the student responses to finding F values, I usually see about 10% error anyways when students reading the charts, okay? Another version of this equation is some people call this modified called Brook formula or some people call this Haaland formula. Both are acceptable. And you're going to get yourself 1 over square root of f is equal to 1.8 log of epsilon over d divided by 3.7. So you can see they are similar except there's a 1 to the 1 Point eleven to the power of plus here's the advantage six point divided by the Reynolds. So Haaland formula is more preferable because you can see over here I have a square root of f here and within the logarithm I have a square root of f and as a result I can obtain my f as an explicit solution to the equation. I don't see any square root of f or f value on the right hand side. Okay. It's only a function of epsilon over d and a Reynolds, just like the Moody's chart does, okay? So this version seems to be a bit easier to analyze, mathematically speaking.